The preperitoneal pelvic packing technique was modified in Denver based on the seminal work of the Professor Cherney in Hanover and further refined by the work of uh, Professor Trentz in Zurich. Okay, great. I'll take it in just a sec. Access to the pelvis mm -hmm. is through a lower midline abdominal incision. It's important to maintain focus on the midline because the fascia becomes attenuated below the semilunar line. Once the skin is opened, and this is approximately a six centimeter incision, then of course the subcutaneous tissue is divided down to the level of the fascia. Of course, uh, under uh, urgent conditions of advanced shock, the technique is uh, done much quicker uh, with a knife and without concern of uh, superficial bleeding. Is a really nice but you can see here as these the tissues are divided uh, that the underlying fascia becomes uh, clearly visible and okay, so the it. midline can be identified. Uh, Yep, go ahead through. Right here, bring the, the soft tissue on either side. Right angle. You can see here how the right midline the is apparent right. and the underlying blood clarifies right. the focus of the dissection. Again, it's important to attempt to maintain midline position. In addition to uh, the central position, uh, it's important to mobilize each of the fascial layers uh, to uh, separate carefully from the bladder. And most of the time, the dissection is relatively easy because the blood clot has opened up the proper space. Once in the uh, spates of Bretzi, uh, then uh, uh, again, the important point is to Other locate analysis? the bladder and mobilize it this to sure uh, one side for yeah. placement of the packs. Okay. Okay, let me see that right the angle space then. is open, then it's important to clear the video. bladder from uh, both sides. The safest way is to take the finger and sweep along the pelvic rim beginning on uh, one side across the symphysis and then to the opposite side. In general, we place packs on the side with the most significant bleeding or fracture. In cases where the fractures are similar, such as in this patient, let me see a sponge the sponge. packs can be placed uh, sequentially. Okay, let me see the first pack. Let me see an empty sponge stick now. The first key maneuver is to drive the pack deep in the pelvis. And that can be done with a sponge stick as shown here, or some uh, can do it with a, a cob elevator. But the key point is to get that deepest lap yep. in the uh, pelvis. Okay. And you go in your side now. Okay. What I mean by that is positioning uh, that lap in the well, SI joint and deep in the sacrum where the venous bleeding is most common. Get the third lap ready, please. Now uh, packed the the both the right and left side in the deep region, off. we now approach the Give middle back. We'll go back to the right side here and again using uh, okay. one type of instrument or the other. Please. It's important to tightly pack the second layer against the right. deep Three. layer. Right. The uh, final layer, the third layer, is uh, placed above uh, this second pack. Watch out for second. And once again, it's important to tightly pack this area. We always place three packs on either side in adults uh, as per protocol. And in children, in fact, uh, we often will only use uh, two packs, depending, of course, on the uh, size of the pelvis. 
But we have a strict protocol of uh, three packs on either side for adults, so that the uh, team removing the packs the next day will know uh, how many packs to anticipate as they remove them uh, sequentially. So in sum, that would mean a, a total of six in adults and uh, four in uh, children. You got a sponge stick to me? Can you show me this for a second? No, it's important to emphasize that this is a multidisciplinary procedure. Okay, go ahead, Zach. Virtually all the time, there is both a trauma team and an orthopedic trauma team uh, doing this procedure simultaneously. That is, the orthopedic team focuses on placing the external fixator while the uh, trauma team uh, primarily directs their attention to the uh, packing of the pelvis. But together, we help each other align the pelvis and determine if the packing has been done as optimally as uh, possible. On occasion, uh, we will, in fact, uh, remove packs from one side uh, or the other and repack if it appears that we've not uh, maximized the opportunity for tamping off. Again, I'd emphasize that uh, generally the cautery is not used in cases of uh, extreme hemorrhage. The next uh, component is to identify the fascial edges so that a tight closure can be made of that midline fascia again. The uh, fascial closure is somewhat complicated uh, in the lower midline. It's important to identify particularly that anterior fascia and get large bites so we can apply tension to the uh, suture line to optimize the tamponade of the preperineal pelvic space. We initiated this preperineal pelvic backing protocol at Denver Health in 2004, and we now have over 150 patients in which it has been applied. Our mortality has literally decreased 50% over the preceding uh, 10 years. Of course, another distinct advantage in preperineal pelvic packing is the ability to manage other life and limb threatening injuries concurrently. Whether this is trauma surgery or orthopedic trauma surgery, it allows both teams to approach these other injuries simultaneously. It is important to recognize that despite very effective packing initially, that roughly 10% of these patients require delayed angioembolization. In conclusion, preperineal pelvic packing is a rapid, life-saving procedure that is applicable to any trauma center with an orthopedic surgeon or general surgeon familiar with pelvic anatomy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.